Hey girl, it's Chris with the Fat Black Girl. And today we are discussing something that is near and dear to my heart. It is a serious topic um, and sad-ish, you know, but it is definitely serious. Um, but before we get into that, if you have been, I know, I know you have been watching my content. I know you have, like on the sly, like on the low, low, like, but I'm gonna need you to subscribe. I'm gonna need you to add me on Instagram. Like, can you, like, can you stop? Cause I know you, I know you digging it. I know you dig me. I know you feel me. Okay. Go on and hit it. Hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button and like be a part of this fat black girl magic. Thank you. You wear me out. So I took a little bit of a hiatus and it wasn't planned. <laughs> I live with a condition called endometriosis. I, I, I spoke about it in my like channel introduction a while ago, um, but suffice it to say that, and we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of women's issues. Men, I would encourage you to continue to watch um, if your girlfriend or your wife or your daughter or a woman in your life is experiencing what I'm about to share. So women, look, you, you know the tea. Endometriosis is a condition where when your uterine lining sheds, i.e. you're on your period, um, the lining goes elsewhere in your body. Um, it can go into um, your intestine, it can go into areas like around your stomach, anywhere in your kind of abdominal region that blood can go. It is an excruciatingly painful condition and it can cause a substantial amount of scar tissue um, because that blood has gotten trapped in different areas inside your body. I have a very severe case of this condition. I don't want to call it a disease or a disability, but I do have one of the most severe cases of it. So what does that cause? It inhibits your ability to have children. It can cause excruciatingly painful period. It can cause pain even when you're not on your cycle, which is why I was not with you. I was not filming and I was not posting because I was doubled over in pain and not on my period, which really sucked. So here's a quick backstory. Um, I have always had painful periods, um, so much so that I, at some points would get excused from class, like when I was in high school, because it was just that debilitating. It was difficult to walk and the pain went from like just under my breasts to like my knees, like that whole region was just in excruciating pain. And I just always thought that, you know, if you're on your period, you have cramps. I later found that that is not the case at all and your period is not supposed to be painful. So ladies, if you are having period cramps and so much so that it renders you incapable of going to work or going to school or doing anything that you need to do in life, go to your gynecologist and get that checked because your period is not supposed to be painful. In August of 2012, I was diagnosed with stage four endometriosis and um, ovarian cysts. And I know that it can be a little bit confusing that if you have ovarian cysts, you automatically think of PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. But I do not have PCOS, I have endometriosis, and my condition causes cysts to um, form on my ovaries that are filled with blood. Sorry, it's just the truth. So in 2012, I had a cyst or a couple of cysts to rupture. And I will never forget this. I used to work for um, a higher ed school. We had a company outing to a baseball game of a minor league baseball team. Sis, I wouldn't stand. Like, as soon as they took attendance, as soon as they handed out food, I was out of there. Like the kid was like, escape routes, where are the exits, I'm gone. I'm not staying for this. I left, I at this point I was living on my own, but I went to my parents' house 
um, just to say hi. And I would never do that because I was actually passing my apartment to get to my parents' house. And when I got there, it felt like Jason <coughs> took his knife and stabbed me on the right side of my abdomen. On the right side of your abdomen, you have this excruciating pain. You automatically think, oh my God, it's my appendix. We rushed to the hospital because I was doubled over. I couldn't even stand up. I was doubled over in pain and rushed to the hospital. They do a transvaginal ultrasound and they see what they think is just one big cyst on my right ovary and then a little bit smaller of a cyst on my left. Fast forward to October, 2012. We had scheduled surgery for October 2nd. I will never forget it again um, because it was supposed to be an outpatient procedure that should have lasted about 90 minutes. They were supposed to do it laparoscopically. They were gonna put a scope through my belly button, go in, um, lance the cysts, remove all the endometriosis out of my system, and that was gonna be done. What I thought was going to be an outpatient procedure turned into a four hour surgery. And, and I'm gonna get a little graphic here. So just, just we grown, you know what I'm saying? Just listen. Because so many cysts had ruptured over the years, my um, reproductive system had fused to my stomach, which had fused to my intestine, which had fused to my rectum. Not only that, I had one fibroid tumor just in there chilling like sis really like it couldn't just be enough to have like cysts the size of grapefruit and oranges and kiwis i had to have one count them one fibroid tumor like for real so that was in 2012 and after that we tried a couple of different types of treatment um one common form is lupron injections Lupron is a hormone injection and it puts your body into menopause. I loved it, okay? I didn't have any of the weird, crazy side effects that some people get with Lupron. Um, hot flashes, definitely. Night sweats, absolutely. Um, and then my cycle stopped, which was a blessing. I was here for all of it. Here's the deal. I don't mind sweating a little bit if I'm not doubled over in pain. You know what I mean? Um, some people experience um, a lot of other symptoms and side effects that uh, resemble menopause, but I loved it. It was once a month I had to go um, to my doctor, get the injection, and I was fine. The problem was it wasn't really solving the issue because my cysts came back and they continued to grow. Fast forward to this year, um, we started Oralissa. I hated it. Can I tell y'all, Oralissa, first of all, let's just start with the packaging of Oralissa, okay? It's dumb. Like, we can't just get a bottle. Like, why it got, please hold. So this is the Oralissa packaging. It's like hard. You got to push through it, it's it's just stupid give me a bottle sis like why we gotta do all of this like you need hu superhuman strength to get through this it's ridiculous the problem with oralissa is i experienced all of the side effects okay i had night sweats i had hot flashes and not like just oh geez it's a little warm out here on the veranda no the kid was drenched in sweat. Those night sweats, I, my bed would be drenched in sweat. There are side effects of suicidal ideation, suicidal attempts. I did not get suicidal, but the depression was real. The emotional roller coaster was real. Um, I also experienced some weight gain. I also experienced um, constipation like let me tell you something. These, these, these little pink things, they tried to take your girl up out of here. Okay. I hated it. And it, it was just the worst experience ever. I, um, experienced pain. I'm going to say three and a half weeks out of a month. This, this treatment, it didn't help to subside any of the pain. It didn't, um, 
It didn't reduce the size of the cysts. They're continuing to grow, currently present tense. My doctor was like, sis, enough with the pills. We're done, they're not doing anything. And it's sad. I mean, there's not much I can do. Um, and so that leads me to where we are now. Um, so I have gone to my doctor. I had another ultrasound, both um, a topical one and a transvaginal one. And these cysts, baby, they are trying to take over. They are trying to reign supreme up in here. I go through bottles, no lie, bottles of extra strength Tylenol. I'm talking 500 milligrams. And I will take three or four of them boys just to try and subside the pain. At the ripe old age of none of your business, I am praying over the decision to have a complete hysterectomy. That is the only curative measure for my severity of endometriosis. There are some women who have kind of mild to moderate endometriosis and they can still have children. Um, they can still lead a, a wonderful and amazing life and their pain is kind of contained to their cycle. That is not my story. Um, children are not in the picture in any way, shape or form because again, I'm gonna get real personal. The severity of my condition along with the damage that has been done from years and years of cysts that are weighing down on these teeny tiny little ovaries is just not happening for the kid. I'm also considering it because I have family members that have passed away from ovarian cancer and cervical cancer and those those concerns are very real for me. Would I love to have a child? Absolutely. I want a chocolate little ashy baby running around here. Absolutely I would. Let me tell you something never to tell a woman who said that she cannot have children. You can always adopt. Yeah, sis, I know. I know. Thank you. Gosh, I, I never would have known that had you not told me that I could adopt a child. Let me help you out. There are women, it's me, I'm women, that want the experience or wanted the experience of carrying their own child. For those of us that do want children and cannot, don't tell me I can adopt, sis, I know that. The point is that my body is not functioning the way that it was designed to function. Do you get what I'm saying? So don't say that to nobody. Back to the regularly scheduled program. If you are living with this condition, I wanna encourage you to stay hopeful. It's tough, but it's not the end of my life and it's not the end of yours. If you are struggling with this condition, find a gynecologist. If you are in Chicago, there is the Chicago Women's Health Group, which is a part of Northwestern Hospital. I love it. I swear by them. They are amazing. And um, I just want to encourage any woman that's out there that's struggling with this condition. It, sis, it can be debilitating. I know. I know it can. But there's always hope. Get around some, some women and some people, some people. I'm not even going to specify women. Get around some people who understand, who won't tell you that you're exaggerating or it can't be that bad or, oh God, oh, well, can you just push through? Get around some people who understand and who most importantly will not invalidate how you feel. This is not an easy condition to live with, but there are women that are doing it every single day and you're looking at one and we're out here killing the game. Oh God. So thank you for allowing me to share with you. I enjoyed our time together. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you enjoyed. And if you have enjoyed this fat black girl magic, I invite you to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. And until the next time, bye.